<laughs> oh, thank you. You take every single idea of someone else, don't you? And then you suddenly decide, hey, let's turn that into an idea in the future. <laughs> you could invent so many other things, and yet you say, inventing this thing will turn the tide in everything? Granted, they may be right, but still. <laughs> oh my god, this is actually funny. If it were for the fact that the spare hangs in the air, I would actually think that this is very well done indeed. I mean, don't, this is a very well done chapter indeed. I actually enjoy this more than many of the other chapters of this week. Yes, this is the Dr. Stone chapter 50, and we see what happened one month ago in the Tsukasa Empire. We see the resurrection of Hyuga, and many of the big guys mocking him for he was skinny, but he wielded his favorite weapon, a stick, and he immediately defeated them. I don't know how um, Tsukasa knew someone like him, but hey, he for some reason seems to have known a pretty strange amount of people, because we see some other resurrected, including one guy who seems to have arrows, and we see how they build their empires, and well, wow. In just one month they created a fortress inside using wood and stone and many things more. Huh. Well, Sukasa, you were right when you said you had many fans and no one who you cared about. So for someone to lead anyone to do all this, that is kind of interesting. I'm just still a bit surprised that how did you find so many likewise-minded people? Well, it's Sukasa, so who knows. Either way, he begins to talk to Hyuga about how he is thankful for the fact that nature has been blooming like this and there is no strife in this world. I mean, Tsukasa's monologue about this and that can be sometimes a bit annoying, but at the same time a bit understanding. It's, um, uh, because he believes that uh, the old world were surrounded by senile old gluttons. I mean, he wasn't necessarily wrong. There is a lot about this new world is more too corrupt and now it's just full of nature and not anything else. But even if I were sealed away and resurrected, I would not have liked the, the primitive world that much because I wouldn't have any survival skills. More than that, if I didn't have any pants, I wouldn't really want to live in that world. So he is, um, so he didn't really, so he mentions how much he wanted to wipe it out away. And we also see a girl who was agreeing with Tsukasa about the fact that uh, we, they worked themselves to death and now and then they had to be paid the rent and was slavery. Uh, and now uh, they're living in a world uh, where they don't have to do anything. You know, I think that is actually pretty wrong. You know, true, you may not have to pay the rent and all that, but if you think you live in a world where you don't have to do anything, you're wrong. People have to take responsibility for their actions. That's the way of an adult. And in a way, Sukasa is pretty emotionally mature in all this. The one who agrees with her, with him is a, is a sexy lady that is apparently also someone who is very strong, yet, le gen yet gentle, who is also a fan of Sukasa a very long time ago. As uh, we s again, as Ashigiro Gen sees all this, you wonder how this is gonna do that. I was gonna pass about it. Sukasa wonders about uh, the what Hyuga thought about the world a long time ago, and Hyuga agrees with Sukasa's views about the fact that it was not an utopia. Sukasa keeps keeps on talking about the uh, um, the the fact that if uh, there were those who could invent weapons be resurrected now, then everyone would uh, then anyone would die. So uh, I mean the peace would be broken. So he agreed the fact that uh, a purgatory was necessary in order to uh, in order to make sure that uh, no one would invent such ma madness again. Well, it was madness. But then Sukasa began to talk about Senku, the guy he called a friend and uh, who he knew is the only one currently who could resurrect uh, the everything with them um, well you know well damn it why did that sound always have to be that with the power of sound and stuff like that so 
I'm not sorry, I was distracted again. Not the power of sound, the power of science. Ugh. So he will, um, so in order to uh, purify this solid humanity, he, uh, Sukasa says he's willing to dirty his hands as much as it takes. And that means including killing a lot of innocent people. <laughs> you really are misguided in that way, Sukasa. Either way, Hyuga returns and tells to Tsukasa that uh, Senku lives, which he reacts with a with a stoic shock. With that, they now begins to plan the the primitive Ishigami village. Now begins to think on what would they have to do with that. Uh, um, uh, he mentions the the restoration form and how easy it is, but mentioned also they need a nitric acid. And they mentioned they can make it out of poop or, poop or shells, but it will take really long and they need a shit ton of materials. So, uh, and without that nitric acid, they couldn't make gunpowder for guns, so they cannot uh, do in all of this. So, um, what are they gonna do? Tsukasa has the advantage in numbers and amass a huge force that is growing every day. So, um, so, no. Ah. Damn it, not Kyokai as a Ko uh, Kokai uh, mentions about what are they gonna, they need to do a preemptive strike. However, Senku says they can do that with a fun scientific a a ingredient, one that uh, will, is the most powerful weapon in all of human his history. Ashigeru again asks if that is nuclear weapons, but no, Senku says it is nothing more than regular cell phones. <laughs> I uh, got <laughs> a gag. Uh, well, and the funny thing, in one of the earliest chapters, I don't know what it was, was it chapter 8 or 7? Um, Ty, you all talked about let's resurrect cell phones <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> and now, <laughs> Senku decides he's gonna invent a cell phone. <laughs> Ashiguro again explains to all the villagers what cell phone is, and they, of course, react uh, many of them react with shock because there's no way something like that e existed while the exciting groups was including uh, uh, the old smith and of course um, uh, Senku's protege all that things is amazing but the uh, Koki asks if how can that be a weapon and uh, Senku reveals that if they can communicate over uh, at, uh, at over each other in this then no by communicating with each other over distance, they can relate information to one another, and with that information, they can coordinate their attacks and plan preemptive strikes uh, without anyone being none the wiser. Especially if they have double agents. So, who could possibly be their double agents? Well, none other than Taiju and Jusihara, who is still at the Sukasa Empire. And what we know, they are still on. on Senku's side. At least I hope they are. Will they? Um, will they really become the triumph card? Well, if they have been brainwashed by Sukasa, then things are gonna turn ugly. However, I don't think they will, because in the end, well, you know, they were best of friends to Senku. So with that, uh, they uh, Senku, thanks to a painter, creates a map about everything and how they're gonna invent this. It's a lot of things, all from copper coil, charcoal, plastic, to even make lead tin soldier and sulfuric acid to create battery and wine and many things more. Yes, it's a very huge map indeed. How they're gonna make this and create a cell phone, I don't know, but starting now, the cell phone arc begins. I mean, you could uh, just create weapons as well, although technically none of those weapons would do any good against an army that is a superhuman as the Sukasa army. Still, though, I really hope you have more than just a cell phone plan, Senku, because in you need a transmitter to communicate with something like that. I mean, Senku is smart enough to create that, but still, how are they going to create that? More than that, will Taiju and Yusihara really become the effective double agents as they've been all this time? I don't know. The cell phone arc starts now. All in all, Greatly enjoyed this chapter. It was more of a hope bringing chapter than a lot of the others, although not not at the beginning, of course. That was quite scary. The spare is hanging in the air. 
but I greatly enjoy this chapter. You give me your thoughts if you have any.